Oi there, and welcome aboard. This deep dive, we're setting sail on a virtual voyage. It's part social gathering, part daring adventure, and, well, let's just say it involves a bit more skin than your average yacht club outing. Sounds intriguing. What exactly are we charting a course for today? We're setting sail for your topless Tuesday bingo cruise in Second Life. For those new to the world of Second Life, um, it's a digital playground where you can create your own avatar, build anything you can imagine, and even, it seems, enjoy a bit of risque fun in the sun. Or at least the simulated sun. I see, I see. Picture this. The sun is setting over Tordangle Harbor. You're surrounded by a fleet of over 30 boats, both sailboats and motorboats, all decked out for the occasion. And overhead, a squadron of virtual aviators adds to the festive atmosphere. It sounds like you dove headfirst into the social heart of this digital world. Absolutely. And your choice of vessel. A sleek Hunter H125 sailboat, but we'll dive into the specs of this beauty a bit later. Right now, adventure calls. Your journey began with a northward push out of Tort Angle Harbor before turning west towards a place called the Dire Straits. The Dire Straits. Just the name conjures images of challenging waters, narrow channels perhaps, and strong currents. Any experienced sailor knows those can be tricky to navigate. It seems you were up for the challenge. The timeline mentions passing a leviathan skeleton at a place called Ahab's Haunt. Can you imagine encountering such a site on a virtual cruise? It really speaks to the creativity and imagination that Second Life users bring to this digital world. They've built an entire mythology around a simple bingo cruise. Exactly. But the journey doesn't stop there. You sail past Cheerport Airport and even encountered multiple marinas along the way. It's like they've recreated an entire maritime world within this digital space. It makes you wonder, by recreating the familiar in a virtual world, does it change how we experience and perceive these places in real life? That's a fascinating question. And speaking of familiar sites with a twist, get this, the next landmark on your itinerary was none other than the Titanic. Imagine the stories those virtual decks could tell. But it seems your journey had to continue pushing onward through a channel towards... Wait a minute, what is this? What's caught your eye? The timeline mentions passing a construction barge seemingly abandoned in the middle of the channel. It even names the owner as someone named Michael Linden. Michael, if you're out there, we need answers. Perhaps it's an artistic statement on the transient nature of virtual creations, or maybe Michael just decided he needed a change of scenery. After all, in Second Life, you're only limited by your imagination. Maybe you're right. Speaking of pushing the boundaries of imagination, let's talk about the boat that made this incredible journey possible. The Hunter H-125. Okay, so we've got the specs on this Hunter H-125 sailboat. And while they did not skimp on the details, it's described as a faithful, like, digital recreation of the real-world sailboat, mm -hmm. designed specifically for Second Life. It's remarkable, isn't it? Even in a digital world, there's this dedication to replicating the nuances of real-world design and functionality. I'm looking at the overview here, and it mentions something called an ultra-mesh model. So it's all about creating that immersive experience, even down to the smallest visual element. Precisely. And it goes beyond just the visuals. Remember those LSD routines mentioned earlier? Yeah. They're crucial to making the sailing experience feel authentic. Okay, you have to remind me, what exactly do those routines do? The acronym always throws me off a bit. Right, so LSD stands for Link Set Data. Okay. In simple terms, it's a system that ensures all the virtual components of the sailboat, the sails, the rudder, the wind engine, all work together smoothly. Just like on a real sailboat where you need coordinated systems for navigation and control. Ah, so it's like the invisible hand guiding all the complex mechanics behind the scenes, making sure the virtual sailing experience feels as close to the real thing as possible. Exactly. Without those LSD routines, you'd essentially be left with a pretty digital model that doesn't quite handle like a real sailboat should. That makes sense. So even in the metaverse, you can't escape the laws of physics entirely. You still need to harness the wind, adjust your sails, and navigate those potentially tricky waters. Absolutely. And you were surrounded by other boats too, especially while maneuvering through those narrow channels. It must have felt like a virtual regatta. But seriously, it's incredible how this cruise managed to combine a challenging sailing experience with a fun social atmosphere. It really speaks to the diverse possibilities of Second Life and how people are finding creative ways to connect and build communities in these digital spaces. And sometimes they leave perfectly good construction barges unattended in the middle of a channel. We may never understand the mystery of Michael Linden's barge. But as we approach the final leg of this deep dive, let's shift gears from the technical aspects and those unsolved mysteries to the heart 
of this virtual adventure, the experience itself. So we've explored the route, we've geeked out over both specs, all that good stuff. But what I'm really curious about, like, what was it like to actually be there sailing in this topless Tuesday bingo cruise? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Because it's one thing to recreate, you know, the look and the feel of sailing. But did you feel that same sense of freedom, you know, that connection to the water, even in like a digital environment? Yeah, it makes you wonder about the nature of experience itself. Mm -hmm. Like if your senses are telling you you're sailing, the wind is in your hair, you're surrounded by this like vibrant community. Does it matter that it's happening in a virtual world? Right. Yeah. It's a blurring of the lines between like the real and the digital. And let's not forget the uh, the topless Tuesday element of all this. It adds a whole other layer to the experience, right? This wasn't just about sailing. It was about embracing a certain level of freedom and self-expression that might not be possible or even, you know, acceptable in the offline world. Don't underestimate the power of these virtual experiences. They can be opportunities for connection, for exploration, for pushing boundaries. And yes, even for a little bit of fun in the sun or, you know, the simulated sun. Exactly. So for anyone listening who's feeling a little adventurous, maybe a little curious, I encourage you to uh, dive into the world of Second Life. You never know what you might discover. Maybe you'll find yourself at the helm of a virtual sailboat, or perhaps you'll stumble upon your own Michael Linden mystery. Who knows? The important thing is to keep an open mind. And on that note, we'll drop anchor on this deep dive. Until next time, happy sailing.